Hello everybody, welcome back to Valley of the Mist Block of the Month. I'm Adrian Ritter. And I'm Shelley McNeely. And we're here with the uh, June 2022 Block of the Month. And these blocks are due in September this year. Okay, so um, as you can see the block we have up there. Um, Shelly's going to go over fabrics in general and then she'll go over fabrics in particular for this block. Right. Okay, for um, this year, if you're turning in for the drawing each month, this is the a focus fabric we're using. So you need to use this if you turn it in. But if you're making them for yourself, use whatever focus fabric you want. And then we have a white fabric whatever you choose, and two fabrics that coordinate with the focus fabric. Okay, okay, so now for the block Oops. this month. Okay, so for this month, we need, <coughs> excuse me, four pieces of white, which we're calling fabric number one, that are two and five eighths by five and five eighths. And then one seven inch square, which is kind of hard to see, but it's right there. And then with that square, we want you to cut it on both diagonals so you end up with triangles, like four triangles out of that piece of fabric, okay? And then fabric two, which we're gonna cut, which is your first coordinating fabric, and that ends up being the center bigger pieces. So whichever fabric you pick for that, we're calling that the first coordinating, and we, you need two six inch squares. Okay, and those squares you're gonna cut on one diagonal. So we end up with a, a bigger triangle, okay? So there's one of them, here's my other one. I have four triangles, but they're only cut on one diagonal. And then we have fabric three, which is your, which is a second coordinating fabric, which ends up being the center square, and that is two and a half inches square. And then we have fabric four, which is the focus fabric, and that's one six and a half inch square. And that one you're gonna cut like you did the white ones on both diagonals, so you end up with four triangles. Okay, so let me get rid of these ones that we don't need for this first step. You won't need your rectangles for a little while. You just need the focus triangles and the white triangles for this first step. And we want you to, to um, orient your triangles so you have the um, the right corner the 90 degree angle um, all you can put them all in a stack of that one it's oriented all the same and then the white you're going to do the same on the on the other side and we are now you actually could sew from either end but we recommend that you start sewing this piece together from this right angle because it's just nicer. If you're going in from one of those little points, your sewing machine sometimes likes to, to eat it. So you're gonna take the black piece and flip it over onto the white. And, and remember, these are different sizes and we want you to line up this, this edge here where the right angle is. And you're gonna sew this seam. And you're gonna do that for all four and I want you to press them toward the focus fabric. And then um, when, when we come back, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we have our four little um, focus fabric and white segments. And now we're going to join them with our, our coordinating fabric, the coordinating fabric number, first coordinating fabric, which we're calling fabric two. And basically we want you to take these piece that you just made and have the focus fabric at the top and put the coordinating fabric right next to it and we want you to match the points here with the black and the coordinating fabric and you're going to sew now down this edge well it'll flip over the other way sorry I flipped it the wrong way so you're going to have the coordinating fabric on top uh, of that sorry, the focus fabric on top of that coordinating fabric, and you're gonna sew down this seam here. We're gonna do those, four of those, uh, with all four that we have, and lining up this point. Be careful, because like we said, your sewing machine may like mm -hmm. to um, eat that point. I always use a, a little piece of leader fabric so, to start that off. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
and then we're gonna this one we're gonna press to the coordinating fabric all right so we'll come back with our four pieces all right so we're back and we should have everyone should have four of these sub blocks um, that make the star okay so this this step here is probably the trickiest step of the whole block but it's easy so we're just gonna go over with it real quick so the first thing you need to do is you know you've got on this if you're looking I, I would we'd suggest you orient your block like we have it here with your coordinating fabric at the top and then focus in the white like that so there's a little tail down here on this on this piece and just take a ruler and trim that off straight okay just don't don't measure it or anything just trim it okay it should be fine then the next thing you're going to do you're going to take a ruler and you can use any ruler that's at least six inches square okay you need six inches in two directions well roughly yes but we'll say six it could be five and a half but then it won't be the yeah. right direction the other way so yeah. yep. so that's what we're saying so i have a six inch square and shelly has a six and a half so you can use either but you could use you could use your long six by 24 inch one it, it's just a little more cumbersome yeah. and and what we're going to care about here is on you're gonna you're gonna line up this edge straight edge that you made here on five and a half okay so that i'm going to come in a half an inch on mine Shelly's going to look for her five and a half because she's got a bigger ruler. And then at the bottom edge, I'm going to line up this bottom edge. And don't worry about this tail sticking off here. It's fine. We'll take care of it in this step. You're going to line up at five and five eighths at the bottom. Okay. So I just have to come in. I have to come up in three eighths up from the bottom of my ruler. Now on this ruler, the three eighths mark is the five eighths mark is only at the edges. There isn't a mark in the middle, but you'll see it's, it's, there, there are dots at the quarters, so you can just kind of go halfway, okay? So I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a half over here, so I'm a half inch in, and three eighths at the bottom, and I should have just a little sliver on the left side, and at the top I should have about a quarter of an inch, and we just want you to trim those two edges, okay? So your block now is five and a half this way, and five and five eighths that way, okay? So do that with all four of them. Right. Um, for some people, it's easy if you, they, they make that seam line, that marking tape. The other thing that we suggest, which we learned recently in, a, in, a, in another class we were at, you can just take a Sharpie and mark on there and mark that five eighths line and the five and the five and a half on your ruler and when you're done, just take rubbing alcohol and it'll come right off. It doesn't destroy your ruler because the markings on your ruler are actually on the bottom. So anything you mark on top, you can just wipe it right off, right. okay? So and, and that makes it easier for you. And the other thing, I wanna back up just a second. In the last segment, we talked about how um, if you have to sew in at a point, your, your sewing machine might wanna eat that point. If you are struggling with that, I have two suggestions. The first one would be change your needle because it will definitely do it if your needle is not sharp. If you have a ballpoint needle, it might do it. I mean, you, you kind of want to, uh, we use a top stitch, stop, top stitch needle generally um, for quilting. Um, you know, you can read, there's many articles out yeah. there about the kind of needle to use. Uh, but if your needle is dull, it might eat it. And the second choice, which not everyone will be able to do, but if your sewing machine <clears throat> has extra needle plates, one of them might be a um, straight stitch needle plate, which really just has a little hole where the needle goes through. Now, if your machine is smart, Shelly's machine is smart. Right. If she has that one in, it won't let her program in a stitch that's a wide stitch because that would break her needle. Now, my machine is almost as smart as Shelly's, <laughs> but it will let me do that. And I have broken a needle. I mean, but I, I would say I, and it was funny because Shelly never puts in her straight stitch plate and I always put mine in because 
99% of the time I'm quilting, which means I'm sewing a straight stitch. True. So I don't care about um, oh, a zigzag or anything. So I can have that straight stitch played in, but it doesn't tell me. And I can't, if I put in a zigzag or if I have to move my needle over for some reason, I, you know, I have broken a needle, but you know, breaking a needle won't kill you. There's so. another option. Oh, what's the other option? Start in the middle. And yes. then sew to and the so end, to either edge. And yes. then turn it around and do it from the middle the other direction. Right. Because I actually, on this last one that we sewed, I did have it eat a corner. And I changed my needle. And and then, because I just had to tear, I had to rip out that corner. I just sewed it from the middle, middle out. I didn't start again at the point. So um, definitely, if you are struggling with those points and you don't have a straight stitch plate, that is always an option to start in the, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, that's a pain in the neck. I don't want to start from the middle and keep turning it around. But you realize in the long run, it, it takes like an extra minute. It does, uh, and it's way better way, than ripping it out. Yeah, yeah. Way faster than ripping <laughs> it out. Because it happens. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna sew, uh, we're gonna make those trims. And then once we have it trimmed, and you know what, I don't have a trimmed one up here, but it doesn't matter because it's pretty straightforward. After we trim it, that's when we need our white pieces, our white rectangles. And these white rectangles get sewn right onto this edge with the focus fabric. So you're going to line it up. Um, it should be, it should be the right it's, size. It's yes, the right size. It should be the right size. It might, I, would, um, I would line it up with the edge that you... With it, it doesn't matter. It'll line up. Yeah, it Just stick that up. on that edge and you're fine because you've trimmed off this tip. And you've, on this trim, we've trimmed off these two tips, so now it'll just match up. Yep. So you're gonna line that up and sew that white on there. And we'll come back and we will have four rectangles. Four rectangles <laughs> and this little center piece for us to tell you what to do with, okay? All right, so now we're back. Oops, my little block fell. We're black, back with our four pieces, four rectangle pieces. So you have those four and you have your centerpiece. Now I do want to mention, when you were trimming those ones the last time, that edge that, uh, I think it's the, when you're trimming the five and a half inch width, these are very close to five and a half. You may not have had anything to trim off. It may have been perfect, okay? Right. But we just wanted you to get them to make sure they were down to five and a half. Now if you're a little short on that edge, you need to fix your seams. Yeah, they can't proceed? Uh, your white strips would have to be wider otherwise, yeah. The white strips would have to be wider. Yeah. Okay, I mean, or you could sew that white strip on with a narrower right, seam. Right, right. Okay, so that, that seam we added last. So if you didn't want to fix this block, you would have to either, like Shelly said, make this a little wider or sew with a an eighth inch seam or something, right. whatever. You have to you have to get that width out on We're there. We're going to have some trimming at the end, but it's not a lot. It's not a lot. We didn't we didn't give you a lot of extra. Okay, so now for some people, not for you guys because we've already done this one this year. <laughs> they dread these partial seams, but they're easy, and it, and it does allow you to do these kind of cool blocks. So you have these four pieces, and I would suggest laying them out in front of you how they go. And then you're going to take this center piece and you're going to lay it against one of one of these blocks. It doesn't matter. It can be any one. And um, so I did this one. So now I'm going to sew a partial seam right here. And I just want to sew enough to hold it down and um, make it easy to attach the final seam, at the, the last two seams at the end. So we suggest you do about halfway. Okay, so you're gonna take this and you're gonna sew just roughly an inch down. It's an inch and a quarter, I think, because it's a two and a half inch block, but if you sewed an inch down. And then you're gonna fold this out and press it out. Oh, I, we also didn't mention on the last one how to press those out. We press to the white. Now, if you don't like that, you could open up the seam, but I wouldn't suggest pressing it to the focus fabric because that would be very lumpy, okay? Anyway, so Shelly has done her partial seam. Right, I have my partial seam right So here. you can see she sewed about an inch. Okay, so the next step 
she presses it out and then she takes so that that block uh, if she orients it like that let's see uh, so if she she took this one right here uh, if you orient it like that and then she's folded it out and now she's going to set this next block on top and and you have a whole seam there so you just I'm gonna turn sew. this how it would be on your machine yeah so you just uh, that's backward it is yeah because you you're going to sew this edge but it would be on your machine like this okay oh you're right okay you're right so um so you're going to sew along this seam here on the top and you'll have you'll sew it press it out press it to whatever seems less lumpy and then you're going to take the next piece when this is sewn on now it'll be you're going to go kind of counterclockwise around this block okay so on this one and then sew on that one and then and then now you'll have a whole seam here and you start it here so you press fold this one over and you just finish sewing that seam all right that easy peasy right sure yeah <laughs> so just remember <laughs> just whichever one you start with just start working counterclockwise around that no, it's clockwise. I'm upside down. Yeah. It's clockwise either way. It doesn't it's, matter. You know what? We're upside down, so it gets it confusing. Doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so you're going clockwise around the block. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to come back, and we will have our finished blocks. All right, so we both have our finished blocks. I trimmed mine. I'm going to tell you I had very small amount to trim like a sliver on every edge right and and so Shelly is just looking at hers and all right we looked at it right before we came back and hers is actually at some point exactly 12 and a half and otherwise it's a little over right. and, a and few it doesn't places. have to be like um centered anyway it just needs to fit and right. your tips should be they no should be, problem they should be well back in there yeah okay so two things that I want to mention number one I forgot to tell you you can go to the Valley of the Mist website and get the printed instruction with photos in in the YouTube instructions I do have um, basic instructions but there's no photos I can't put photos in there so the one with photos on the website um, the other thing is that if you assembled these two pieces reversed it, it's okay but that just means your um your star is going to spin the other direction so how we went clockwise to do these final pieces you would be going counterclockwise because you would have it would be turned around and it's kind of hard directions might be a little bit different and basically saying, it would be a mirror of what we right. did so so if you wanted to follow what we were doing and you had done it backwards it still works and as i was showing shelly yesterday all you have to do is turn it over and look at it through a strong <laughs> light and 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 it's that block right it, it, it's just the backwards the the mirror image of the block which right. is a perfectly wonderful block right. it's just not the way we did it just that they all need to be the same that's the most important part when you sew the triangles yes. together you can't have them half sewn one way and half the other right. but it's okay if you make the block reversed yes uh, you can turn that in for your right. for your um, block or use it in your quilt it looks fine uh, it's just the reverse and to be honest if you're making these for yourselves you could play with the color placement of of the of the um, of the pieces. Right. The only thing you need to keep is these two pieces need to be the same color. The they they don't have to be the white. They could be a different color. Right. We don't do that because for the focus fabric, we were trying to minimize your use of the focus fabric, but we didn't want it to be so little that it was just the center. We've so, done that. We've done that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. We've got we've got centers. A focus fabric all over this year so we wanted to use a little bit more focus fabric but definitely as long as you keep that fabric one both pieces the same you'll get the same look but it, it could be totally mixed up how the fabrics are right um, I think that was everything right? I think we're good yeah, yeah. so um, like I said these blocks are due 
at the September meeting. And that's because in the summer months for the Valley of the Mist, we do different kind of things in our meetings that we aren't really turning in blocks. Um, definitely, if you have a block, you can turn it and I'll hold it. Right. Um, we'll, we'll be at the meetings. Um, this year for June, actually, we have a speaker, which we don't normally do, and uh, so that'll be fun. So I uh, hope to see you all at the meeting.